Big thanks go out to Taiwa for supporting today's video via Patreon. Ginny Fei versus Krenko Mob Boss. A couple of token commanders against each other today. We, yeah, if it wasn't for that ancient tomb, I wouldn't keep that. But yeah, we've got a turn two tireless tracker. We're on the draw as well, so hopefully we get into something half decent. No turn one plays from our opponent. And we just get into another land, so uh, yeah, we'll get down a tap green land. A Krenko's command for our opponent, so any fast mana, any haste enablers into Krenko now are already looking threatening. The issue with us getting down a quick tireless tracker here is that it takes us an extra turn to get down Ginny Fey, but in the meantime we can be concentrating on drawing cards with the clue tokens. So play out the tireless tracker. Followed by, what did I say, a haste enabler in Hammer of Perforos. Alright, a Sylvan Library for us might just play that this turn. Play out the Command Tower. That makes us a clue token, so we'll sacrifice that and draw straight away. Plus counter on the Tireless Tracker. And we obviously draw from the clue token into another land. We're going to get flooded this game apparently. So let's help the aggro player along. We'll play out the Sylvan Library and hopefully not dump too much life into that. Our opponent's likely just going in for Krenko next turn. We'll block a little bit of damage with the Tireless Tracker. Argument to be made for us getting four points of damage on them there. And they've got a Castle Embreath. So down comes the Krenko as we predicted. Could gain some life with the Shamanic Revelation. If we end up with creatures with power four or greater. Uh, it could happen if we make a bunch of 3-1 dogs. Or get the buffs with the... Uh, what is it called? The Beastmaster Ascension. But it's really all on these draws here I imagine. Okay, just a bunch more lands. Wish we had a means of shuffling. In hindsight, should have held on to the fetch, but we weren't to know that. So we'll just have to help the Krenko player and dump life into that. We'll play the Avamaya so that we don't have to put life into the Ancient Tomb if we don't want to. A clue token is made. So yeah, we'll get down the Ginny Fey and maybe just crack a clue token at the end of the Krenko player's turn. So at the end of our turn, of course, making three goblin tokens, we can discard as many forests as we like because we've got the um, Yavimaya in play. It's seven creatures we need to swing in with with this, so we can make a couple of tokens here. That will give us four creatures. And then make another creature instead of a clue next turn. That's five. Just not quite fast enough, I don't think. Bet our opponent's going to have a lord here as well. Of course they do. <laughs> a goblin king. It's going very, very well for them. Krenko looking to go wide here, making seven more goblin tokens. Might still be alright if we manage to get into a wipe. They do actually have mountain walk on us as well, thanks to the Jetmere's Garden, so I haven't actually worked it out. They may well just have us here. Uh, no, I don't think they do quite. That is 24 damage on us. So we go down to three. Do they have a lightning bolt? <laughs> it is a goblin war strike. So damage to a player equal to the number of goblins you control well and truly got us there. They just had absolutely everything they needed and with no interaction from us whatsoever. Yeah, we weren't likely to do anything against that deck in that particular game. We'll play another one. Ginny Fey versus Zephyrus this time. And uh, again, turn three ramp isn't going to be fast enough. Yeah, Rite of Harmony is pretty useless until later on, so we'll mulligan that. Into a much worse hand, not destined to do very well today, are we? And then into a grip with nothing but lands, excellent. Keep, get rid of the basic, and I don't know, the plateau. We're on the draw at least, so we might make some excellent top decks. Our opponent plays a thriving heath. Alright, and into another land. Play the Jetmere's Garden. Just holding up counter magic potentially. We don't currently have anything to do on turn two and draw into Avenger of Zendikar because why wouldn't we? Then a dungeon descent for our opponent. And tapping this time into a wall of omens. So maybe that's the card they just drew into. All right, Sky Shroud claim isn't terrible. So we can go some Petal Grove into our commander. This time a Merfolk Looter, draw then discard. Okay, by invitation only. Uh, so I do think it's just the Sky Shroud claim this turn. We'll get an untapped land with the Arid Mesa. Make sure not to grab any forests with that because that's what we're about to get with Sky Shroud claim. Our opponent not countering us there, so I don't think I'm going to go secure the waste just for one token. So we'll get out Temple Garden and the Savannah. 
they're not much point swinging in. They've got a 0-4 to throw in the way. Demir Aqueduct for our opponent, so it does look like they're playing a more casual game in all fairness, which is good for us with the opening hand we had. Uh, okay. Played the Demir Aqueduct and then bounced the Demir Aqueduct back to hand, so hopefully we don't see a shame scoop here. Might be a newer player. Alright, well, they'll get a land out one way or another. Solemn Simulacrum this time. And that does give us free reign to cast something big next turn as well. Deciding to loot now with the uh, Merfolk Looter. Not sure why they're doing it right there. And discarding a dungeon map. We get into another land, par for the course. So we'll play that out so that we've got more mana. I'm just going to tap out this turn into Secure the Wastes while they are shields down. Preferably I'd do that on my opponent's turn, but they are a Demir deck, so I don't trust that they don't have counter magic. Uh, I don't like the idea particularly of running cats into this either. I mean, this can only block one creature, but yeah, I think the three ones are going to be more useful for us in the long run. So we get a bunch of Vigilance 3-1 dogs. We will swing in and maybe get rid of that Solemn Simulacrum. No, just decided to throw the Wall of Omens in the way. So leaving the Bounce Land in hand, instead playing a Guy Reach Sanitarium this turn. Followed by the Commander and a Lightning Greaves. So three Mystery Cards in hand at the moment. Then going for the Loot again with the Loot at Core. No need to do that on this turn. They should be waiting until our turn because for all they know we could get a bunch of really big hasty creatures into play and not blocking with one creature could make all the difference. Deciding to forego the Demir Aqueduct. And it seems as though they might have drawn into a Sol Ring there, so getting that out before the end of the turn. Okay, a Legion War Boss. I think it's probably better to just go Avenger of Zendikar into a bunch of cats here. Or maybe we could go Sram's Expertise into Legion War Boss. Yeah, we get more cats this way, so we'll go for the Avenger. 7-2-2 two, two Hasty Cats coming out of the Avenger of Zendikar. Go through to combat. I'm swinging with everything apart from the Ginny Fey. Because they could double block on us there. So trading a cat with a Solemn Simulacrum. I uh, don't think they're blocking with Sephiris for some reason. Letting an extra cat go through. So we knock them down to 10. Every point of life is going to matter to them here if they don't get a board wipe. I assume they're... Not looking to cast a board wipe because they did get their commander out last turn. Every chance of drawing into one with the Solemn and the Merfolk Looter though. Obviously they get to venture into a dungeon here with the Sephiris. And it was Tomb of Annihilation they went into so each player loses one. <laughs> Pretty risky against an aggro player. Alright, an Agent of Treachery. think it might be a bit too late for that. Not often you can say that about Agent of Treachery. So stealing away the Avenger of Zendikar. It's noteworthy we could go for by invitation only here and name 5 on that. And then we'd be left with creatures and could continue to swing in at them. But we just go wide regardless here. Again, not holding up a block earth. Luckily for them it doesn't matter. Unless they're holding up a darkness of course. Very rare that you see that one though. They have discarded a wharf infiltrator. And they ventured into Veils of Fear. Each player loses 2 unless they discard a card. Uh, I'll just lose the 2 life. So, they are at 7 now, and that is an artifact mutation for us. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it matters. They pretty much need darkness here, don't they? Why don't we go for by invitation only? So, I sacrifice 5 cats. Our opponent sacrifices his entire board. Entire board of creatures, anyway. And they venture into a dungeon on this turn as well, so that is Sandfall Cell. Each player loses 2 life unless they sack a creature, artifact, or land. We're fine just losing the life. Our opponent goes down to 5 life as well. So all we do here is turn everything in sideways of course. And that's the victory for us I imagine. Alright so that game went pretty well for us. I think that was against a more casual player. But interesting to see Sephiris make an appearance again. If you want to see more from Ginny Fey or any other commanders. Then be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.